Right. Exactly. So I shall just start that little bit again. Um, welcome to today's IPC and MCPD Building Masterclass. Today we have human design business alchemist Cherry Thompson with us on a topic which I find personally fascinating, human design. First, some housekeeping. So the call is a maximum of one hour and that includes the 15 minutes Q&A. And I will let you, Sherry, decide if you want the questions as we go along or at the end. Um, the session is recorded, so if you could please stay mute when you're not asking a question, but if possible, do put your videos on, because it just makes it so much nicer for, for Shari in particular. You can put your questions in the uh, chat box or say where you are or what sort of coaching you do, all that sort of thing. Let's move on, however, to our topic today and how to triple your income using human design. So I can see that I'm not the only one interested. Go ahead, Shari, all over to you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and to share everything with you today. Um, before I open the slides, I am a generator, so I love to respond, which we'll go into in a moment. So you can ask me questions as you go. You can you know, drop those in the chat. And then if I can respond to them in that moment, then I will. Hopefully I have planned enough time to have the Q&A session at the end as well. I'm a bit of a time optimist. So there's that as well. Um, little heads up, my manifesto babe might be walking through the door at any minute, very excited to be home from school. So if you hear him come, he'll just go, <laughs> but he might be in the background. Okay. So let's get the slides up. Does everyone have their human design chart by the way? Yeah, you want to have it? Okay, let me let me drop a link in here where you can go get it while I do a bit of an introduction. Um, I use Zoom all the time, but I'm not very fluent in it, as in I'm not great at doing the multitasking bit. There you go. So you can go get your chart from that link that I've shared in the chat if you want to go get your chart now. Okay, so how to triple your income using human design. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you today is how to unlock the power that's already inside of you so that you can increase your income and impact without scaling your team or piling all of your profits into Facebook ads. Caveat to this, I do love Facebook ads, but you don't need to be piling all of your profits there. There are ways that we can work with our energy as well. So I'm going to be sharing with you specifically how to expand your capacity and I'll explain what that means as well so that you can receive more how to use your human design for clarity. Literally, that's the number one request that I get when I work with people and I always say, what do you most want to achieve from this session or this experience? And it's always about clarity. So I'm going to share with you how you can create that for or understand that with your human design. And then your business strategy. What does that actually look like in your business? How do you use it? So it's really practical as well. So your chart, oh, I just put the link. Obviously, I was more organized than I thought. But if you don't have your chart, then it is going to be useful for you to have as we go through this session too. A little introduction to who I am. I'm Shari. I'm a 5'2 sacral generator. I've had over 23 years of marketing experience, which always ages me. I'm like, oh God, really? 23 years? Um, I've got a marketing degree, an MBA, corporate career before I started uh, my own business over 12 years ago. I was a master's lecturer, number one Amazon author, embodied human sign expert, a mama and a traveler. So I'm not going to give you a whole story about me, but I think it's important you know that what I'm sharing comes from that understanding on multiple levels of what it is that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So human design, if you are new to human design, it is the science of the aura. This is what got me hooked, got my scientific brain into, okay, let me know more about this thing. Let me know how the science of this energy works. It is a system which is a synthesis of ancient and modern sciences and has proven being a valuable tool for human understanding because what it actually does is combines a lot of different systems like astrology, the I Ching chakras, but also the modern things that we understand now, the modern sciences like genetics, biochemistry, quantum mechanics. It's all about the electromagnetism that we have that is inherent inside of us. It's who you're always designed to be, to do, and to experience in this world. And it's your unique differentiation and personal alignment for abundance with ease. So... There will be some energy talk and there will also be some strategy talk. We're going to find the sweet spot in the middle with what we're going to explore today. Human design ultimately is the answer to every question you ever had about yourself or your business. 
You know, when you're asking yourself, how do I market my business? What's the best strategy for me to sell? How am I best designed to, uh, you know, how do I make decisions that are the right ones for me? All of these things, it is inside of your human design. What we're going to be covering today is scratching the surface. It's going to be very valuable. You're going to have practical information from this, but ultimately it's the tip of the iceberg. And a lot of people get so excited, they want to jump into the rabbit holes. So I'm hoping I will ignite your passion for human design as much as it really ignites mine. Human design, the way I see human design is through the lens of empowerment. And this is something that I'm really passionate about before we get into the juicy stuff that I know you're here for. I think that understanding the empowerment piece is so important because if you go down the rabbit hole, there are a lot of people talking about human design and not everything that is shared about is the most empowered version of that of that understanding or that teaching. And so I'd love to invite you all to remember that I'm sharing with the intention of empowering you in understanding your design. And if you can also put it through your own filter of empowerment so that it really lands in a way that feels beautiful for you, because it's not about constricting you or confining you or labeling you it's actually about self-awareness and empowerment it's really about your own liberation and authenticity so if you also are tapped into how it empowers you then it changes the whole perspective and how it lands with you as well okay deal we can make a little salute promise to that <laughs> amazing okay so the principle of human design comes down to auras primarily. And we can get really exciting about all of the other things. If you can see your human design chart, there's all of these different pieces, all of the parts of the puzzle. It can be really exciting. And I get it. And the most important part of your human design is your aura, because your aura, remember I said this is the science of the aura. Your aura is how you're designed to meet the world and how the world responds to you in return. Your aura determines your human design type and your strategy. So it tells you what your type is. And again, this is not a label. It is actually giving you more information about what your strategy in the world is that is applicable to everything in your life. And the strategy really is a process, how you're designed to operate, how you're designed to work with your energy so that you're not going to be burnt out or overwhelmed or confused. So I'm going to run through the auras and then I have tables that show more information. So Hopefully I'm appealing to all of the different human design types with this. Okay, manifestors. Who are the manifestors in here? I can see Tanya, Tanya's manifestor. Um, so the manifestors are 8% of the population and they are designed to be the catalyst. They're designed to initiate. They don't wait, wait for something outside of them. They initiate with this surge of energy inside of them. And they say, okay, this is where we're headed. This is what we're doing. So they have this auric field, as you can see here, that is, um, very potent in moving through to bring that catalyst into the world. It kind of moves through. It's like a, um, I, got, I don't always find the sexiest analogy, so <laughs> bear with me, but it's a bit like an energetic bulldozer that clears the way to bring that into reality now because it's about what evolution requires in this moment. The generators and manifesting generators, so I'm a generator, Who's, who else is generator, manifesting generator in here? Yeah, we're making up 70% of the population um, collectively. And I will differentiate out between generators and manifesting generators, but our auric fields are the same. So the way that your aura works is you see it's bigger. They say it's like an enveloping aura because people can feel your energy. When you are aligned, people feel that and they're drawn to you, they're magnetized to you. When you're not, people can feel that too. And so as a generator or a manifesting generator, you're designed to respond. So the manifester says, hey, this is what we're doing. And then we go as generators and manifesting generators, or you go, that's amazing. That is so exciting. How do I get involved with this? And so you respond to something in that way, following what is exciting for you. Projectors, I know we've got some projectors in here too. Amazing. Um, the projectors, I know this looks like a pizza slice. It's not a pizza slice. Your auric field is like a unicorn horn. It's the best I could do on camera, I'm afraid. Um, my skills are elsewhere. So the, this unicorn horn that you have as your auric field 
is really going deep and looking at how energy is already being used. It's looking at what is already there and how can it be made more efficient and more effective. It doesn't do surface level. It gets straight to the heart and soul of what is going on. So projectors, you're designed to be recognized and then invited for your genius and your wisdom because you don't want to be giving that and going really deep with people or systems or whatever it is that you're looking at. If it's not being recognized first, you want to make sure that the work that you're doing in the world has this kind of upward transformation cycle instead of it being like, I can see it and I want to tell you, but people are not ready to receive it. Wait until they're ready to receive it because that's where the difference happens. Okay. Projectors are 21% of the population. And then reflectors who are 1% of the population, they have this aura, which is sampling. So have we got any reflectors in here? Maybe, maybe I'll see in the chat in a minute. Reflectors, 1% of the population. So the auric field is sampling all of the time because they have no defined centers. If you're a reflector, all of your centers are undefined. So you feel the energy around you and you're actually looking for what is it that we are doing that we can do better? Or what is it that we've got right? And it's a little bit like if you imagine this in, in the corporate world, you know, with new product development, the manifesto would be the innovators. I've got this new idea. Amazing. The generators and manifesting generators would be excited and then build it and bring that new product into reality. The projector would then do like market research and customer feedback and stuff and say, you know what, we can improve this. We can make this more efficient. And the f reflectors would be like, you know what? There are things that are faulty with this. Let's go right back to the new product development cycle and take it full circle. So the reason I share this with you is because everybody has a part to play in the process. And the world has taught us that we are supposed to be all of these people, especially if, we're, if you're in your own business, all of these people combined. But when we really tap into who we are and how we're designed to work with our energy, then it also not only liberates you, but it liberates everybody else to play their part as well. Okay. So the way this can look is, I just gave you an example, actually, I forgot I had another one to give you. Um, if you imagine creating a movie, then the manifesto would be the producer and say, I've got this great idea. Generators and manifesting generators would get on board if they were excited and say, this is amazing, let's bring it to life. And they would be like lights, camera, action. The projector would be the director and say, you know what, we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to put this over here and we're going to film from here. And then the reflector would come in at the end and watch the movie and be the film critic. Okay. Everybody has a beautiful part to play. So when you look at your chart, there's some clues. Now we're not going to explore all of these today because okay, I think I squish a lot in in 45 minutes as well to give you the most that I can. Um, but I want you to know what is available for you, what all of the different pieces look like. And this is specifically through the lens of business. So if we start over here, and this is my chart as well, so you can see how mine looks. The type, so for me, I'm a generator. The type tells you how you connect with alignment. Has anyone heard, you know, when when business mentors say, or when it's in uh, marketing, if you're aligned, then everything happens easier. And then your head goes, yeah, but what is that? What is alignment? Who knows? <laughs> it's like this elusive kind of mercurial experience that nobody can quite explain. Well, with human design, you can explain it. So we're going to also look at that. And so you can, you know, find what is tangible for alignment for you. Your type also can tell you how you create content, how you're designed to sell in the world. So we're going to explore a little bit of that as we go through today. Your authority is your decision-making tool. You know, when you're looking for clarity, it comes from your type and your authority. If you always know how to make an aligned decision, the work really then is to trust that it's the aligned decision because most of the time it's not logical. It doesn't always make sense to your head and your head will go, but what about this? And what about this? And it's about how do you trust it? But actually the aligned decision-making from a human design perspective is not from the mind. We're not designed to make decisions from the mind. So I will cover that today. Your profile. So you see here my 5-2 profile. This is, you can tap into this for audience expansion and we don't have, we won't be covering that one today specifically. And then the centers, where they're colored in. So all of these shapes on your chart, these are centers. And they 
kind of correlate to chakras and the chakra system, if you're familiar with that. Where they're colored in, that means that they're defined. And that shows that you have got consistent access to the energy in those centers. These are like beacons of energy that are radiating out of you all of the time. This is where you have magnetism, okay? Your undefined centers, where they're not colored in, any center that's not colored in, even if it's got gates, like you see my center here has gates around, anyone that's not colored in, this is where you're designed to experience wisdom. These are portals of wisdom because you feel other people's energy in these centers. So you experience the world in a bigger kind of experiential um, experiment than you can in the defined centers because you have inconsistent access to the energy in those centers for yourself, but you're sampling the world around you in those centers, okay? The reason why I put this in is one of the things that you might find out about in human design is something called conditioning and conditioning effectively disconnects you from anything that is magnetic and aligned for, for you. And that happens in the undefined centers because you're feeling other people's energy and sometimes they leave a bit of their energy there or we get a bit attached to their energy and we keep it as our own, but it's not yours. And the wisdom is activated beyond the conditioning. Like we have to go through that. A lot of people in human design get into this like, oh, quick, we've got to we've got to fix the conditioning. For me, I would rather you tune into where you're empowered, which is what we're going to do today, because that's where you're going to be able to anchor more um, like it's a stronger anchor to you. OK, your aura. Remember, I said everything in human design is the science of the aura and the aura is the most important part of your process. We've covered this a little bit in giving you the introduction but I want you to really look at how you can start to integrate this into your life and into your business. And I'm going to show you practically how you do that in your business shortly. If you are a manifester, and it will tell you on your human design chart as well, manifester, strategy, initiate and, and inform. And that's because manifestors use this energy that's inside of them to have this surge of energy and they'll use their throat center and they'll initiate and say, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what you need to know in order to create evolution in the world, in order to, you know, shift paradigms in the collective, that that kind of insight that nobody else has right now, because the manifestors are the catalysts, the trailblazers, they're the revolutionaries. They come in to bring this information right now because that is what is required. They initiate and inform, they use their voice. If you're a manifester and you're listening to this and you're not using your voice, tap into your voice. My son, he's a manifester. If I ask him questions and he's not ready to inform, he literally sits there and says no. Until I realized what human design was, I thought he was rude. <laughs> I was like, what is up with this? <laughs> and then I realized, okay, no, he's just really embodied. It's all good. <laughs> so um, it's knowing that energy inside of you to inform. Your signature is what tells you when you're in alignment. And your not self is what tells you when you're out of alignment. So remember when I said it's very tangible in human design, the more you can connect with that tangibility of what that means for you, the better. And the more that you understand for everybody that we are designed to be out of alignment as well, because then we, when we come back, we're building our resilience. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm not asking you to be out of alignment more than necessary. <laughs> you know, like it's going to happen. That's OK. Bring yourself back to alignment. So as a manifester, your signature is peace. That means that when you're aligned, you feel at peace in yourself. You feel calm. Really connect in with what that means for you. When you're out of alignment, you feel anger or annoyance or irritability. Tanya's like, yep, got it. Again, what I will say, normally I, won't, uh, normally I talk about this when we look at embodiment, but it's super important, manifestors, that you process anger in an empowered way. The world told us that anger is a bad emotion. There's no bad emotions. Really empower yourself to tap into that and process it. It's perfect, okay? Generators and uh, manifesting generators, you respond and then manifesting generators inform. So I'm gonna tell you about the response piece first. Your strategy to respond means that even if you have a great idea, you do not do anything with it until you get something outside of you that gives you the sign that you respond to and the response comes from your sacral so you might feel that in like your sacral is in your womb space so you might feel that in your womb space like it gets this surge of energy it might be super exciting or you might feel butterflies in your chest or you might go oh, 
like I really do jazz hands a lot of the time when I respond. So <laughs> you can you can feel this energy moving through you and it's this excitement. It's a really visceral excitement in your body. That is the response. And that happens because the universe is lining up loads of stuff to, to support you, but it also is turning on your battery pack. Your sacral is a literal battery pack. If you're going ahead with things without that response, you can still make it work, but you won't have that battery pack turned on. So you're using energy resource that you don't have is the quickest way to burn out. Okay. So that response, for example, if I am thinking about doing a retreat and I want to do a retreat in Greece, and maybe I look on Facebook and somebody's just come back from a holiday from Greece and I get the response and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to launch the retreat. Let's go but you have to get the response. We're not just looking for signs. So generator, respond, move. Manifesting generators, you respond and then you inform because what you're actually doing is bringing that manifestor energy of you into play because you've got a bit of manifestor and you've got a bit of generator inside of you. Although your aura still works as a, as a generator aura. So response trumps everything. But you want to make sure that this is right for you because as a manifesting generator, you move super fast. You process things quickly, you move quickly, you maybe even look around and see everybody moving really slow and wondering why nobody can keep up with you. That's because you're designed to move a lot faster. And so when you have that informing part of your process, you might say, oh my goodness, I've had the best idea to do a retreat in, in Greece. And you see what your audience say because you're trying it on and you're not trying it on to see what they say and see if there's enough people. But it's like, let me step into this. Let me try it on a little bit. You know, like when you go shopping, you try a dress on. Because if it's not a, a sacred response from that, if it's not a yes, then you want to leave that because something else is going to come right, right away after it, okay? Your signature is satisfaction. This is for generators and manifesting generators. So that means that feeling of a job well done. It, it's that, you know, when you sit down at the end of the day and you're not exhausted, but you're like, oh yeah, I feel really good about what I've achieved today. It's that kind of energy because you have this sacral juice inside of you and it doesn't need to be applied directly to work you could have painted a beautiful mural you could have danced in the woods it could be anything but it's using that sacral energy that is going to have you feel satisfied okay if you are out of alignment you feel frustration which could be saying i'm frustrated or you might feel a knot of energy inside of you that's literally where your energy stopped flowing i feel that just below my ribs when i get it and also for manifesting generators, you might feel some annoyance and anger as well. Projectors, as I already explained to you, you want to have the recognition and the invitation. I'm going to go deeper into this because a lot of the charts say, wait for the invitation. And it's really like the most disempowering thing in the world. Like, what, am I going to sit at home and wait all day? Like, what is happening? Actually, if you think about the word projector and what that means, projector is taking something like this and making it big. If you think about movies, if you think about when you're at school with the projectors and the overhead projectors and stuff, it takes something small and projects it big. So this is why I'm really focused on the recognition, because if you are recognizing yourself and you project that into the world, the world recognize you and recognizes you in return and will be clambering over themselves to say, can you support me? Can you help me? Those are your invitations. Okay. I'm going to break this down a little bit more in, in terms of business, because again, it's kind of a misconcept. Um, but the recognition piece is the most important. The more you recognize yourself, the more other people recognize you too. Your signature is success. So when you feel successful and you will literally see success in your reality as well, that's when you know that you are aligned. If you feel bitterness, that is when you are out of alignment. Now, bitterness can be like, you might really resonate with bitterness when I say it. For those who ask me what that means, it's a little bit like it could be resentment or jealousy or even looking at what are they doing compared to me? How are they getting results? I'm doing all the things they're doing. How are they getting the results and I'm not? And that's your sign to come back and recognize yourself again. Reflectors. Reflectors are designed to wait one lunar cycle because you have no defined centers in your chart, which means that you are the lunar beings. Everybody else is a solar being. The reflectors are lunar beings because they feel the transits of the moon. The moon is moving through all of the gates in the chart. So they feel that energy inside of them. And it means that 
you don't want to rush into something if you're not sure it's going to be the same response tomorrow, if it's not the same answer in your body tomorrow. So the way that you move forward, your strategy and your authority, if you're a reflector, is to look for consistency in your decision. Does it still feel the same every day? The better you get at that and the more you become aware of your body, then you might find that you don't have to wait a full lunar cycle. But generally, full lunar cycle is good. Please be patient with yourself because then things speed up afterwards when you make the aligned decision from waiting. Your signature is surprise, which means like being really genuinely surprised and delighted by the world. And you're not selfish disappointment. And that's when you're disappointed with the people that you're around or the world or what you're witnessing. Okay. Now, I do spend a lot of time on the aura because if you imagine your aura, it's like a glass of water, but it's a magic glass. It can kind of expand and contract. Okay. So if you imagine it's a glass of water, everything that you're putting into your aura, AKA everything you're saying yes to, everything you have in your reality, you know, when you have a look in your, um, I don't know, maybe your makeup bag and there's some old mascara or something that is still in your auric field. All of these things, everything you say yes to is in your aura. If you are filling that space with lots of yeses because you think you should or because you're obliged to or it's a sense of duty, then you are filling the space that is available in your aura to receive the things that you want. I'm going to say that in a different way because it's super important. If you are desiring to make, I don't know, you want to make 250K in your business next year, for example. If you are filling all of your auric field with things that you think you should be doing in your business and not the things that are aligned for you, there is less space for that income to come in or the opportunities or the people. But what is also happening at that point is your brain goes, I know how we'll fix this. I know, I've got an idea. What we'll do is we'll work really hard because that will fix it. Or we'll get another blueprint because that will fix it. What happens then is you're using energy you don't really have in a way that you're not really designed to. And all the while your auric field is contracting, which means there's even less space to receive the things that you desire. But it also means that what is inside of your auric field is not aligned. So the universe goes, oh my goodness, she loves this stuff. I'm going to give her more of this. I I feel like I'm going to be really good if I give her more of the things she keeps saying yes to. And so we're on the ground doing the work. God, I'm working so hard. I'm doing all the things that I'm supposed to be doing. And the universe bringing you more of the same. And you're going, what is happening? I don't understand what is happening with this. The quickest way to move beyond that is to release the things out of your aura, your business, that are not aligned. You think you should be on Twitter? You don't really like it? Get rid of it. You think you should be doing lives on Facebook? You don't like them? Don't do it. If there are things in your business that you don't, so for example, I always say, can your aura be filled with limiting beliefs? That's more in your um, undefined centers generally, but it's still in your energy. But I would say that this piece that I'm giving you is going to activate so much more, so much more because you're opening up your energetic capacity to receive more. And the thing is, there are things that have to be done in your business. For me, VAT returns, it's like, it's my kryptonite. It doesn't, it takes me literally 10 minutes to send the reports to my bookkeeper and my accountant. It's I put it off and I put it off. And so there are things that we do have to do. If there are ways that you can bridge the things that that have to be done, I've outsourced as much of it as I can. I get 10 minutes of work every quarter to do it. And I still have to put on the music and really get into my body a bit like, oh, let's make a party of this, you know, (laughs) but If there are things that you need to do, for example, if there's only one way that you're selling in your business and that's not aligned for you, please don't just get rid of it. Like let's put another sales mechanism in place before that's fully gone, okay? The more that you can work with that understanding of your aura, the more you open up to receive more. So um, Jo, I worked with for three months and she actually tripled her income purely by working on her aura. I'm not going to read out all of the things, but um, essentially she came into my world, said, I need to work on my business, thought she was going to be doing things like funnels and ads. We spent three months doing the energetics and she tripled her income. She paid speaker. She got uh, opportunities to work with the NHS. It's amazing. It all can move very quickly. Okay. So clarity, the number one thing I'm asked for, comes from your authority. 
So the way that you use your authority is you make a list. And this is this is like my shortcut version of how to use your authority in your business is you make a list of all the different options. So for example, when I talk about marketing, if there's lots of different things you think you might like to do, but you want to choose which are the ones that are for you, then you can make a list, whether you write it down, whether you audio journal it out, and then you use your authority to go down the list and to identify which is the right one. If you're an emotional authority, that means that you make a decision based on what feels good. And you have the list, And you can go down and go, does this feel good? Does this feel good? Does this feel good? And then you have to wait 24 hours to check in. Because if you're an emotional authority, you also have an emotional wave. And the emotional wave means that you don't know from day to day if you're in a high or a low of an emotion, unless you've done the embodiment work and you're tapped in and tuned into your body. If you're in a high or a low of an emotional wave, it skews the decision that you've made. So you want to wait at least 24 hours before you decide. Don't let people pressure you into doing the thing so it sounds amazing we're going to wait until tomorrow to decide okay if you're a sacral authority you ask is it this is it this is it this because it's a very binary response and your sacral will go yes and move forward for the thing that it is or it's going to go no and move backward like be literally repulsed for the thing that it's not so you ask a binary question is it this one is it this one is it this one If you are splenic authority, you connect with your body and choose what feels simplest and easiest in your body. The spleen is very connected with the body. What feels simplest? Be really honest with yourself. Even if your head tries to take you off track and go, but this doesn't make sense. No, simple and easy is perfect. If you're an ego authority, you choose based on what feels empowered. So you literally go through the list. Does this empower me? Do I want it? Does this empower me? Do I want it? And sometimes it can look like a selfish selfish decision. It's not. If you're decentral authority, this means you're a self-projected projector. That's what it will say on your um, chart. Then you speak out the options. The more you speak out, the more you get clarity because you're tapping into your own sense of direction. If you're a mental authority, share with somebody else. Speak it out. Again, this is called soundboarding. Well, I've got this list. I just want to share it with you. And you can notice the different reactions that you have from them. You're not asking for their input or guidance. It's purely, I'm going to speak these things out. I have a client who's a um, uh, mental authority and she leaves me really long voice notes. And then I'll say, do I need to listen to this? She's like, no, I got there. <laughs> like it's it's that movement of energy to speak it out. Okay. Lunar authority I spoke about, which is if you're a reflector. Okay, I'm moving super fast because I want to make sure I get all of this information to you as well. I know it's a lot of information. If it feels overwhelming, let it drop in at the times that it needs to. It's not about trying to figure it all out right now. Okay, I'm going to share with you about how human design influences your business in terms of marketing and sales specifically. Before I do that, I have a real thing about making sure this is super empowered as you might have already gathered. So I want to let you know, any source can work for you as long as it's aligned, as long as you're being honest with yourself, this is aligned, I love doing it. We're looking at an overview of your chart and only one piece specifically at the moment. When we look at a chart holistically, it brings into play lots of different things that may make it, you know, so if I say, for example, this is how you do something based on being a generator, but there are parts of your chart that make it more projector like, for example, we need to look at the whole chart to get it. But this will still give you a lot of clarity about moving forwards. I just don't want you to squeeze yourself into things that do not feel good. OK, because that defeats the whole object. These are suggestions, not prescriptions. OK, strategy by design. Manifestors. You are designed to be the catalyst. So you are designed to be bold in your marketing. Say what you really want to say. Say what's coming through you. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't filter it. Embrace that bold energy and share it in your marketing. Okay. In terms of where you market and how you show up, wherever feels good is always my answer to everybody. (laughs) For manifestors, what's important is you have to have this sense of freedom. If you're feeling restricted, then your auric field is constricted, okay? It's shrinking. So embrace your sense of freedom and follow what is the most liberating for you in that moment. And again, use your authority for real clarity about this. In terms of selling, you're designed to inform. So 
You don't need to wait for anything outside of you. If you're informing about the thing that you're selling now, you can build relationships between these periods of informing by sharing behind the scenes in your marketing, what is going like a day in the life and those kind of things. And then when you're ready to inform, step into it with that like, you need this. Not I, oh yeah, I think it'd be really nice for you to have this. Do you think it might be nice for you to have it? Like, no, you need this. This is why. I am here to tell you. So it's embracing that energy because you're literally designed to be shaking things up, to be the revolution. When it comes to selling, the way that you launch, and I'm going to say this for manifestors and projectors and reflectors all at once. When it comes to selling, you can do live. I'm not ever going to say that you can't do live. I mean, I'll never tell you you can't do anything. But what I'm going to suggest, because you don't have access to the sacral center, which is the battery pack consistently, that you really tap into how can I be supported in how I launch? So if you're doing live launching, how can you systemize? How can you pre-plan, get things ready ahead of time? How can you have team to support you? Because otherwise you might find, and if you've launched before, you might experience this as well, that you burn out afterwards. The launch is done. And it's like, oh, that you collapse in on yourself for a couple of months, you know? If you have that support, then you can do that live. Of course, you can do the launch in live. Although I would also suggest to literally everyone, actually, <laughs> look at how you can have some kind of open enrollment and, and passive income in your business too. Generators and manifesting generators, you respond, and I'm going to share the response piece first. So you respond by... In your marketing, for example, in your content, you respond by having conversations with people, interacting in the world. And then when you get that sacral hit, then you can go and turn that into marketing. So it could be a question that you're asked from a client. It could be a question you see in a group. It could be something you see in the world. It could be something you hear on Audible. For me, if I see somebody who's written something wrong about human design, I don't respond on their thread. That's their space. But I will go create my own post. So it's, that's how the response piece works. I see it, I wanna talk about it. I, I connect with it, I respond to it. I wanna share this to a wider audience. Manifesting generators, you also have that informing piece as well. In terms of where you show up, generators, you want to go all in. When your sacral says yes to something, you go all in, like obsessed. So you wanna make sure that you're going all in in one place. For me, I show up on Facebook. It magically puts it all over onto Instagram. It's not a pretty grid. But the thing is this, it's aligned because I'm aligned. So it still attracts people, but I'm in my happy place on Facebook. Okay. As a manifesting generator, you actually are the social butterflies. You are moving so fast. I want to try this. Now I want to do this. I want to be on TikTok. Now I want to be on Instagram. Follow what is aligned. As long as it's aligned, please don't get caught in this consistency trap. Oh no, well, I've started on Instagram. So now I have to be on Instagram three times a day. That is like clipping your wings. That is not going to support you. Now, I, I'm a biggest advocate in the world for consistency in your business, but from a place that is aligned for you. And consistency actually means doing the same thing over and over again. Nobody said consistency means that you have to do it every day or three times a day. You find your flow with it. And then when it comes to selling, generators and manifesting generators, again, you respond, you know, in the similar way that I shared the retreat example, when you have that response, then that's how you know what you're selling. That's how you know when it's time to go, when it's launch time. For me, when I get a response, I, you know, spring into action. But if there are things that I've got a response for that's further afield, for example, in December, I'm doing um, HD Huga, which is a virtual retreat day. And so I had all the hits for Huga, the responses, but I knew it was going to be in December. So then I get a calendar and I go across the days, all of the days until I get a response for the date. And I'm like, oh, okay, this day. Like, literally, I plan everything with a response. So when you are selling, the way that you sell is to be as in response as possible. So the more live you can do, which doesn't mean you have to be on a video, by the way doesn't mean you have to. If you're if you're aligned with it, then do it. I, I put a camera in front of me, I'll talk anywhere. Like, I love it. But if you're not, it doesn't matter. You can still do response mechanisms, whether it's in a Facebook group or you have like a Q&A thread or you have emails that people can respond to or, you know, respond to me in my DMs. The more you have that response, the more it's bringing that magnetism out, which means that 
more people feel your energy. Remember your auric field is open and enveloping. You want them to feel that excitement that you've got. That's when you get magnetic marketing, sold out sales, those kind of things. So for me, it's always, I do it live and then I repurpose it. So you can put it once it's done live, it's got all of your energy encapsulated in it. Turn it into a funnel when you know that it works, you know, automate it. Projectors in your marketing, you want to bring that depth of insight into what you're sharing. Don't do surface level if you don't want to. I mean, I don't, I don't imagine that most projectors do. Um, but don't do so, don't be afraid to go deep, is what I really want to say. Don't be afraid to embrace all of that depth. Because you see into the heart and soul of your soulmate client and what it is she's going through. Bring that to the table. Share your wisdom, your gift, your genius, because that's where you get the recognition from. What is also great for you in terms of marketing is to borrow other people's audiences because when you are brought into somebody else's audience, you're already positioned as the authority. The recognition is inbuilt. There's no invitation required. So for example, like um, me being here, I was introduced as, I can't remember what, what I, what a human design business alchemist. Yeah. <laughs> it changes. I've got an undefined G center, so it changes often. Um, and you know, that already positions me as somebody who knows what they're talking about. It's the same for you as projectors. When you're brought into somebody else's space, it doesn't mean you don't build your own audience. You absolutely do. It doesn't mean you don't have your own podcast or groups or whatever it is, but it means that you're going to connect with your people in a way where the recognition is already inbuilt. When you're selling, like I already said, with the limited live with support, but when you know what it is that you're going to sell, it comes from tapping into your authority your decision-making tool will tell you what is the best, like, what are you going to sell? How are you going to sell it? Again, open enrollment, really good for projectors. And reflectors, the way that you market is to share what you feel and to be, remember, the, the words are very literal, actually, in human design when it comes to the types. Um, manifestation, by the way, doesn't mean that only manifestors and manifesting generators can manifest. It means that it's to do with the throat because in human design theory, Man the manifestation is to speak into existence. It's all about the throat center. Reflectors, you're designed to literally reflect the truth of what is happening in the world. The more you share that truth and that reflection, the more people get what it is that they need. The more people go, okay, yeah, I'm listening. Let's bring this full circle and do something with this. And it's going to flow and it's going to change. Don't feel like you have to, you know, um, What's that saying? Nail your flag to the mast. Is that what it is? Where you're like, I've really got to put my stick in the ground for this. I can't, like my analogies have gone. Where you're changing all of the time. So you go with that flow as well. You don't get to say one thing one day and then you've got to say it forever more. And like, that's it forever. Allow that flow to happen. In terms of how you market, curate and flow, be the flow, curate other people's content if it feels good for you in that moment. And it's all perfect. Whatever you're feeling is perfect. Selling, again, tap into that lunar cycle to get the consistency and the clarity. If you've got an offer that you want to put out, I guarantee if you wait 28 days and you have that consistency in what you're feeling, even though it feels like you might want to get going and you're impatient and you're around all these people with defined sacrals who are, who are doing things faster, I promise that when you slow down, everything will speed up afterwards, okay? Same with emotional authorities. I know 24 hours is different to 28 days, but same with emotional authorities. I have so many people with emotional authorities say to me, but do I really have to wait 24 hours? I'm like, yes, minimum. <laughs> give, give it a second to breathe. <laughs> okay. So um, Shamini, when she started working with me, she tapped into some of these tweaks that I've shared with you about her strategy. And after one call with me, she was able to sign up 19 new clients. She had her first 10K day. She got 100% conversion rates because this is what really works inside of this. By the way, I share the example so that you can see the evidence of how it works for other people. Sometimes when we're working with energy, it can be really easy for your brain to bring you out of the loop with it and be like, yeah, I don't know whether that's going to work for me. So this is for you to anchor in your evidence that these things can happen quickly. Okay, your next steps. I am leaving time for Q&A. Look at this. I'm celebrating myself over here. This is a miracle. For those of you who are in my world already, you're like, yeah, this is a miracle. <laughs> um, 
So with this information, what's really important is that you take it and bring it into your reality because information collected is pointless. There's no point having information for the sake of information. And to be honest, you can put it on YouTube and and look at things if you wanted to do that. The reason why I talk about how you bring it into reality in your business is so that you can actually embody it so that you can start to live it and see the results that this brings for you. So the next thing for you to do right now is to understand your human design strategy and like to look at it holistically. If you downloaded your chart from the link that I shared with you, then it also gives you a guide, which is personalized to you that you can download at the same time, which will tell you a little bit more about basically what I've shared with you here, but it gives you something that you can keep hold of, might say things in a slightly different way. Then once you understand it, you really want to embody it. You want to understand, sorry, not understand, live your human design. What is my strategy? How am I looking at increasing my capacity by following what is aligned for me and what is not aligned? Look at what's in your reality right now that is not aligned, that you can start either releasing or starting to create a bridge so that you've got something to replace it. And then look at how you can design your strategy based on your energy and integrate it into your business. And it's not about radical revolution. You don't have to go all in and like, you know, burn your business down and put it in place in this way. It's more about gentle evolution. It's more about having compassion and really being aware of what is happening for you and your energy. I did that. Yeah. For like that's manifesto from an aligned place, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Kirsten, who I think is here actually. Um, so Kirsten is a projector and she did this work and has actually just finished the certification that I run. And she's now signing dreamy clients, overselling courses with one post. It's the energetics and really embodying the body in that, that makes the biggest difference. Okay. Um, also I have an event that is happening on Saturday, which I'm just sharing here if you wanted to come and see more. I'd love to see you if you're in person. It's in Birmingham. You can come in person, but you can also come virtually. And there are different ticket options that you can look at. So in person, it's £149. And in the virtual, it's £99. If you come virtually, you get, well, both ways, you get access to unlimited replays of all the sessions and everything as well. So this is a live interactive immersive day of understanding who you are and how you're designed to optimize your performance sorry, the performance of your business through your unique energetic blueprint. Um, Oh, Charlotte. Charlotte did amazing with her integration of this in her life and her business and got more confidence. She always says she gets the easiest sales when she's using her human design. And she actually worked with me and then came on to do the certification and says she's smug AF that she's doing it because she loves how it integrates into her world as well. Okay. So question time, like hurrah. (laughs) <laughs> wow well done I mean first of all well Thank done you. that was an awful lot that you but you didn't it didn't feel like you were rushing it either though I was scribbling like that it's absolutely Amazing. fascinating and I find it very liberating that you then understand why certain things have gone wrong so far in your business and and the power of understanding and embodying it right we have a you know five or eight minutes even um who has a question we're a small group so you, you don't need to even write them down just unmute yourself and let's make the most of having Sherry here with us Yeah, as I said, I'm a generator. I love responding. So let me know, how can I support you? Don't be shy. When there's no questions, I always think, oh, I've done a really great job at explaining this. So that's true. (laughs) That's true. Often as people are a little bit shy to ask or don't want to make it too personal whatsoever. But I would say, let's make the use of it. I mean, there was a question in the, but we filled that, didn't we? Can your aura be filled with limiting beliefs? Did you touch on that? You did, right? I think I got that one, but let me know if there's anything else you want to explore. I mean, my my understanding of limiting beliefs is if you believe you've got limiting beliefs, you've got limiting beliefs. So the more that you can tune into where you're empowered in your human design and be- make that the focus, then the less impact anything that is potentially limiting has anyway, because it's, you know, energy goes where our focus is. So the more we focus on our empowerment, the less anything like that impacts. 
Right. And you've mentioned authority a few times. So is that something that we find we all have a, a unique sort of because you mentioned different source. That's what we find in our chart, right? Yeah, it would say it in your chart. So if you're a generator or a manifesting generator, you're either a sacral or a, an emotional authority. And it will say, you know, for projectors, you could be anything but sacral or lunar. Yes. And the same for manifestors as well. You could be anything but sacral. Um, so you you find it, it will say, you, normally it says um, type, manifesto, for example, strategy, inform, authority. Okay, so I just need to remind myself what that is. I see there's another question here from Michaela. Can you speak more about the process of deconditioning? Yeah, so deconditioning in human design is where you uh, release anything that is, or I, I prefer to say alchemize, alchemize anything that disconnects you from your sovereignty. When you're in your sovereignty, that's when you're most aligned, when you're most magnetic and most empowered. That's when like your aura is expansive. And so when you have this conditioning, it's like wearing extra layers of clothes that the world bestowed upon you that don't actually serve you. It's getting a bit hot. We're just going to take away some layers your pure potent power is always inside of you. It's not about fixing or anything like that. It's about alchemizing what no longer serves you. So deconditioning for me, the way that I work with it, like I mentioned just now is let's connect you with where you're empowered. The more you embody where you're empowered, the more you can recognize from that place, okay, here are patterns that are taking me out of that empowerment. And then I have an alchemy process that I use that, but simply it's this, it's Ho'oponopono which is the Hawaiian forgiveness prayer. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. That does wonders. I mean, it's a little bit more in depth than that, but <laughs> you can work with that and it will create a lot of shifts in your energy. Can Thank you. you. Oh, that's all right. I was just reading the question. Sorry. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, you do it then. Yeah. Um, can you speak more about limited live with support? Yes. So if you don't have a defined sacral, so your projector, reflector, or manifester, it means that you don't have consistent access to that battery pack. The sacral is like the battery pack. So yes, do live, but don't be thinking you've got to do live launching every month or every time you bring an income into your business. It's more about follow your authority and your, your strategy to do it when it's aligned, but also look at how you can bring support in place, whether it's through systems or people or preparing in advance so that you're not like rushing and doing it all at the same time. Okay. Um, is the aura just related to building a business or is it also integrated into relationships in the workplace and circles of friends? Hi, Beck, you close door, please. Okay. I'm just doing a call. My manifesto came back, my mini money. Um, so, um, it is related to everything, everything in life. Energy is energy across the board. My favorite quote about this is you can't pee in the swimming pool and expect it not to spread because it all like energy is energy. So yes, it's related to everything. Shari blows my mind. Oh, I was going to read that out. Thank you for all the love, Tanya. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, any more questions? Not for you. I'm nearly finished. I'm <laughs> <laughs> the realities of life. Yeah. <laughs> right. We've covered all the ones on there. Anybody else have a, a last question? I mean, lucky us to have you here. And of course, I would encourage all of us to to really look into it uh, in more detail. Um, and so you run coaching sessions on this. Yeah, I run um, certification, a mastermind. Um, self-study programs there's a lot that I support people with and actually if you wanted to come into my group there's loads of videos in there as well that give you more depth about what it means to be a projector like as a projector and then also what it means to be a projector in business so there's lots of different lots of different videos in there as well so what what which group is that where do we join that oh sorry yes <laughs> the human design community in Facebook okay perfect Right. Well, we followed all those messages, haven't we? I haven't clicked all the way down. Yes. Well, I would say, look, you've got lots of loves you and thank you. It has been extremely enriching. Okay, we're doing this one. Oh, yes. You wrote some nice, lots of compliments for you. You've got to keep those as well, right? Uh, thank you very much. Um, and it's wonderful to take something which some people might see as being a little bit woohoo and seeing how you can actually make it concrete and how you can actually make your life and your business in particular flow with a lot more efficiency. Definitely. And, you know, ultimately it's unlocking your potential, optimizing your performance, which always leads to more profit. I yeah. love 
Love all the alliteration. Let's get all the P's in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But indeed, it's that. It's instead of, of looking at other people and thinking, why is that not working for me when I'm doing my best? It's maybe we're not doing the right thing for our alignment. So thank you very, very much, Shari. Thank you to all of you who have participated here. Now it's time for us to actually put it into practice, right? What was that lovely sentence you said that if we just, you know, use it as information, then it's a, it's a shame. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean anything, does it? It just clogs up your brain, overwhelms you if it's just more information gathering. Exactly. Let's so let's make human design work for us. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Sherry. Bye-bye. And don't forget to write in your CPD pads. <laughs> <laughs>